cannot bear it. I will not believe she's gone from all of us. From me. Melanie Wilkes was my only true friend. How could she leave me now just when I need her most? cause of my life's destruction and now the only thing left of me of that wreckage. day will be over soon. Then I can go home to Tara. Melanie Wilkes with all my heart and her husband near as much. Scarlet, stop it. Demon, heaven, lady, cease. Cease this instant. I'm ceased. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
excuse me, Miss Scarlet. Gentleman here to see you, ma'am. What gentleman might that be, Pansy? Well, Mr. Hamilton, ma'am. Now, he says you wasn't expecting him, but he was... I say I wasn't. Well, send him on in, then. Evening, Scarlet. Well, here's a surprise. Have a seat, I guess. I just thought I'd stop by and see how you're doing. Mm-hmm. After all that considerable upset this morning, that was most unfortunate. Was it really all that chilly out there, Uncle Henry? Or was it only me feeling the cold draft of pompous disapproval? Well, there was a bit of a nip in the air, and, and I guess you've got a point about the other. Seems like a fair amount of that disapproval was coming off you, I'd say, Henry. What brings you by, anyhow? I just thought I might be able to offer you a little advice that might ease your situation. And what situation is that? The situation that brought about that unseemly display of mutual animosity at the cemetery, Scarlet. Now, let's face the facts of it. Feelings are running real high against you here in Atlanta. Everybody seems determined to believe that you had your eye and your intention set on Ashley Wilkes right up to the time Melanie passed on. That's a damn scurrilous lie. Scarlet, if I may offer my best advice, I think it would do a world of good for everybody concerned if you would just remove yourself from Atlanta for a while. Give Tempus time to simmer down a little. Run away with my tail between my legs? Is that what you're telling me to do? Well, I guess you'd all be real pleased to see me take the next boat to Timbuktu on a one-way passage. You got the tar and the feathers and the rail waiting outside, have you? I was just making a kindly suggestion. No more, no less. Well, I'm making a kindly suggestion. You don't leave my house, Henry Hamilton. In spite of everything, Scarlet, I want to say that I was real upset to hear about you and Red coming to a sorrowful end. Well, maybe it's sorrowful, but whether it's the end or not remains to be seen. You've been doing enough crying for grief, Scarlet. Joy wants his turn. Well, it's been such a long time. It's shameful. It must be almost a year. More like two, I guess. <laughs> You're exaggerating. Don't believe I am, Scarlet. Well, we, uh, we best get a move on if we're going to beat the dark home. Yes, let's beat the dark home. Pansy, see to the luggage. I hope you don't mind riding rough, Scarlet. I figured as long as I was coming to town, I might as well get some supplies. I don't mind at all. Tell me, how's my dear sister taking the idea of me showing up on your doorstep out of a clear blue sky? Well, I told Sue Ellen to let bygones be bygones. I'm offering you the same advice, Scarlett, and hoping you'll take it. Fiddle de dee, Will Benteen. You know I'm not a person to carry a grudge. <laughs> What's happened to Tara, Will? It's looking downright ramshackle. I'll do the best I can keeping it up when I'm not tending the crop, Scarlet. I know you do, Will. You've always been a steady man, the best foreman we ever had at Tara. And I'll just bet you've been a good husband to Sue Ellen. Lots better than Frank Kennedy would have been, believe you me. Well, coming from the former Miss Frank Kennedy, I guess I can take that as a compliment, Scarlet, and I thank you for it. Ellen, God's nightgown, you're having another? We're still trying for a boy. He's trying for a boy. I'm trying to take care of the two I got. And speaking of which, let me get a look at my pretty little nieces. My, how you've grown. Aunt Scarlet's here with delicious surprises for you. <laughs> oh, your Aunt Scarlet's always been one for surprises. Uh, let's, let's us go in. Lucius, see to that luggage, will you? Come on. Yes, sir, Mr. Wood. How have you been getting along? Just fine, I guess. You're getting some good yields. 
You didn't come back to Tara to inquire about our crops, Scarlet. Why are you here? Why to see Mammy? And where the Dickens is she, anyhow? It's getting ready to lay down a world of burdens. I love you, Mammy. No need for speaking. What I already know is... Yes, there is a need. I never told Melanie. And I didn't tell Red until it was too late. Wouldn't mind seeing that. Devil's face again. So you will. So you will. Come on, here, Addy. I'm just gonna say hi to y'all the set here. I'd like to send this to Atlanta, if you please. Yes, ma'am. This place could use some sprucing up. Looks almost as bad as it did the day the war ended. I reckon we could buy enough whitewash to paint the entire house with what that fancy dress you're wearing cost. You're not being fair, Sue Ellen. As usual. Haven't I tried a hundred times to help out? And hasn't Will been too proud to accept my help? Your charity, Scarlet. It's not charity. Tara's still partly my house, too. It's not charity to try and make what's partly mine a fit place to live in. Yours and mine and the Sisters of Mercy Convent. What do you mean? The startling fact is that our baby sister handed over her share of Tara to the convent. Is her dowry upon her entry into the service of Jesus. Corrine did that. It looks like you'll be having the Catholic Church to contend with before you can make good your intentions, Scarlet. What intentions? Finding a way of throwing us out to live like crackers. That's a lie. I'd say you was way over the line on that one, Sue Ellen. I'll say she is. I wanted us to be a family again. Tara's our home. I wanted us to be a family again in it. But there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of chance of that, does there? Not as long as you go on holding your terrible grudge against me for something that happened a hundred years ago. Well, I just guess it wasn't all that long ago, was it, Scarlet? Well, ladies, please. She just won't let the past be past and forgotten. That's easy for you to say. You're not the one who had her bow stolen right out from under her nose by her very own sister. If you knew what kind of a husband Frank Kennedy turned out to be, you'd be thanking me. You just stole Frank because he was rich and you needed the money to pay the taxes on Tara. Lied to him in the bargain, telling him I had another beau. And you only married Charles Hamilton out of spite because Ashley married Melanie and you couldn't bear it. Well, I guess Kareen is the saint amongst the three O'Hara sisters. I obviously do not qualify. Well, so much for bygones, I guess. I spell Watlands, President. Yes, sir. Welcome to Atlanta. Pick a card. Put it back. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> How'd you do that? Show me again, Red. I bet I'll figure it out. One time for trick, honey. Depending on the trick. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I'll figure it out if I seen it one more time. Take a call. <laughs> now, let me see it now. You 
got it fixed in your mind? Uh-huh. Put it back. <laughs> if I have it wrong, you win. If I have it right, I win. Why do you win? How many guesses you need, Lulu? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rhea! <laughs> <laughs> Take her away, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you change it, Louie. <laughs> now, can I interest any of you gentlemen in the game of chance? Always a pleasure doing business with you, Rhett. Prosperous, I might say. Your survival of our ignominious defeat in the war appears to have flourished with the passage of time. I've had me some luck, Sir Ellen. Mm -hmm. I do thank you, Will, for informing me of Mammy's dire state. It came just as soon as I could manage. Me? Yeah, your telegram. Well, I didn't send you a telegram, Red. Was there another Will Benteen I don't know about? No, you neither? Not that I know of. I just assumed it was Scarlet let you know. Scarlet. Hello, Red. Mammy, I brought you my promise. Look. Look who's come to see you. Hello, old girl. Master Lemieux and horse harness. Who would ever call Mr. Red Butler that? You would. And did. I must have been teasing. <laughs> you must have been. You wouldn't hold against me if I asked you a favor, Mr. Red. Not a chance, man. You remember that fine red silk petticoat you gave me? Yeah, I never gave a prettier to anyone. I want you to see that I'm laid to my rest in it. I'll make sure it goes with you to hell. Would I be asking too many promises if I was to have one more? Anything you want, Mammy. I want you to take care of the Scarlet. She needs caring so bad. I will, Mammy. Always needed caring so bad, the Scarlet did. Why do you sign Will's name to that telegraph you sent me? It was just a little bit of a fib. I was afraid you wouldn't come if you knew I was here. For Mammy, you ought to come. 
Well, I'm glad you did. Apart from Mammy, I just thought it would be a perfectly natural occasion for courteous and civilized conversation between husband and wife. However strained relations might be between us at the present time. I was sorry you couldn't be at Melanie's funeral. I was traveling. So I heard. I laid some flowers on a grave. In Bonnie's? Hmm. I wonder sometimes if things might have been different if our child hadn't died. Do you ever wonder that? No. I've missed you, Red. I've missed you so. I hope you don't expect me to echo that sentiment. Well, I thought you might be able to express some semblance of it after what you said upstairs to Mammy. I lied, Scarlet. Don't say that. Don't say you lied. I will not tolerate it. I lied to make a dear old woman's last moments happy. No gentleman would lie about such a matter. No, I don't suppose a gentleman would. You are such a child, Scarlet. You've known me all these years, and yet when it suits you or pleases you or satisfies you, you can forget all you've learned. Nothing's changed, Scarlet. Nothing. Offered you a divorce. You ready to accept it yet? I will never divorce you. Never. You'll be free to marry Ashley. I don't want Ashley. He was only ever some figment of my silly girlish dreams. Let me make amends, Red. Please, please let me make amends. Let him amend. You care to make her your concern, Scarlet. I'll not be a party to him. I hope you change your mind about a divorce. I think it's the only possibility of some kind of peace between us. In the meantime, I'll see to it that we're seen just often enough in public to keep the gossip down. I'm leaving in the morning. Good night, my dear. The Yankees should have hung you when they had the chance! <laughs> Come to see how Ashley is. You are not welcome here, Scarlet. You listen to me, Indy Wilkes. I made a promise to Melanie, and I intend to keep it. <laughs> a promise? I'll do my best for Ashley and Bo. Now, do you intend to step aside and let me come in like a lady, or do I have to knock you over to do it? Ashley is in no humor to receive visitors, Scarlet, least of all unexpected ones. Where is he? You can either tell me, India, or I'm going to find him. Get away! Dearest, I, I didn't know you were back in Atlanta. Well, don't you look the Dickens. What are you doing? Doing? Why, nothing. What I hear is you haven't been seen in public since the day of the funeral. Really? Well, I suppose that might well be. I ran lost track. Maybe it's time you found it again, Ashley. You mustn't worry about me, Scarlett. I'll be fine. Really, I will. When are you going to start trying to be? I just can't bring myself to believe it, you see. I know how that is. Somebody you love dying. You go to sleep every night and it's gone for a while. Then you wake up remembering. There isn't a moment of a day that I don't feel her near and think that if I were merely to turn, there she'd be.
You're gonna have to find a way, my darling. And you will. How? Well, not like this. Locking yourself away and tormenting yourself with what's never gonna be. You can stare at that door till your old and gray and Melly's never gonna come through it. Ah, Scarlet. You are harsh. Not in my heart. I know nobody loved Melly the way you did. But you're not the only one who did love her. And the rest of us aren't gonna curl up and die from it, and neither are you. For one thing, maybe you should be giving some thought to your son. Melanie's son. You're all he's got now. Is this what you want her to see looking down on you from heaven? A boy all alone and grieving alone because his pa feels too sorry for himself to remember him? To remember what he needs? Shame me now, Scarlett. Pa used to say some of the best things folks have ever done come out of their shame for the things they did before. Now, do you think maybe I could have a cup of tea? And we'll talk things over. Tea. So now, what's the situation with Scarlett, Blake? I offered her divorce. No, oh, I know Scarlett. She ain't digging you up on that. Not yet. Mm, you got more chance of her giving you a divorce. You do. <laughs> Getting into a bank on Sunday. Mm. You going to the ball this year? What ball? What ball? The mass ball. Carnival. Mm. I expect y'all receive your fancy and grave personal invite. Well, I don't know. Probably. Get yours? <laughs> oh, really? That'll be the day. But you ought to go, you know. Probably do a world of good. I didn't know I was in need of being a world of good. Oh, honey. Honey, the only thing darker than your hair of late has been your countenance. I've been looking all that glum. Well, you haven't been altogether sparkly, you know. I think a bit of your former social life might just very well perk you up. You want to perk me up? Why don't you climb on in here with me? I'll climb this ain't filled for two. Depends on which two. Will you Come on. Get it's you. Come on. That's it. How do things stand with my store and the warehouses and the land? Everything is better than well. I might say that it was a more fortunate decision than you may have realized when you sold your sawmill to Ashley. Why? Well, it's going under. What do you mean? Builders always need lumber. If they're building. I know that you're not very interested in what happens in the world, Scarlett, unless it concerns you. But you have got one of the best business heads that I have ever met, despite the fact that you're a female. So you might as well know that there was a considerable financial scandal in New York a couple or, or three weeks ago. What about my money? Are the banks safe? Oh, the one holding your funds is. But investments are very tight, and that means building, too. And if nobody's building, nobody needs lumber. Are you saying Ashley is really in serious financial difficulty? Well, you can't boom without bucks, Scarlett. This is delicious sponge cake. I want my cook to have this recipe. Who's the best builder in Atlanta, Henry? Well, define best. Who can build a reasonably respectable structure without stealing too much? Well, that's a difficult parlay, Scarlett. I'm asking for advice, Henry, not discouraging opinions. Well, I suppose a person could do worse than Big Sam. Why? Big Sam? What do you mean, our Big Sam? Our foreman of terror? Formerly your Big Sam, Scarlett. Does the name Lincoln ring a bell with you? I gotta say it, Miss Scarlett. You are a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> and maybe make them water a bit, too. You could have knocked me over with a feather when Mr. Hamilton told me about you coming back to Atlanta. 
And your subsequent good fortune, Vixen. <laughs> the Lord just didn't suit me after a time, Miss Scarlet, but I did prosper. <laughs> I did prosper. I know so as I could come home here and uh, establish my little business enterprise. I'm glad to see you doing so well for yourself. And I'm here to offer you the opportunity for lots better. I'm just holding my breath, Miss Scarlet, hoping you're going to ask me to build you a big new fine house. I'm thinking more along the lines of maybe 25, Big Sam. 50 acres, Sam. I'll not be utilizing all of them. It won't require nearly that much land to build, what, 25 houses? 25 small houses on standard lots. Yes, ma'am. Who supplies your lumber, Sam? Oh, the Harrison Lumber Works, mostly. You know, good quality, fair prices, if you keep your eye on them. You'll be getting your lumber elsewhere for this job. Twenty-five houses? Yes, sir, Mr. Wilkes. I recently been contracted to build them. Yeah, I'd be mighty pleased if your outfit could supply the lumber to build them with. Well, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. Uh, I will say, Sam, it seems a somewhat precarious investment for anyone in these uncertain times. Now, who are the developers? Oh, some folks I was in business with up north for a short spell, but nice fellas. Highly spoken of up there. Probably will be down here, too, in the south, where they're expecting to expand their business interests. 25 homes, even of the modest dimensions you've suggested, Sam. It's <laughs> a good deal of lumber. I'd say so, Mr. Wilkes. Yes, indeed. We're discussing a whole lot of lumber here. Could be a profitable discussion. Yes, yes, I expect it could. <laughs> I want you to draw up a contract between Samuel O'Hara Building Company and Atlanta Acres Real Estate Incorporated. Well, who in the world are they? They are me, Uncle Henry. And I'm hereby officially calling upon the traditional confidentiality existing between a lawyer and his client. What are you up to, Scarlett? I'm up to keeping a promise. And if keeping it means losing some money in order to keep Ashley Wilkes from going belly up in the sun, then... I'll just have to take the loss this time. Tomorrow's another day. Now, this is something I thought I'd never see in these days of blatant opportunism. These are quality construction. For once, the less fortunate are going to be treated as well as the rich. <laughs> it would appear that maybe all the old values haven't been entirely lost. It does seem that way, doesn't it? I don't mind saying I'm honored to be part of this. I hope there's some financial benefit to be derived from all this honorable and uplifting endeavor, Ashley, darling. <laughs> you can't imagine, Scarlet. No, I suppose not. I have to confess. The truth is, I have virtually no head for commerce. My business is on the brink, Scarlet. And then, like a bolt from the blue, Big Sam walked into my office. The good Lord must have been looking down on me that day. I just know he was. so much polite in the society this evening. I'll have to keep looking. And as for being alone, well, I never am. God is always with me. I'll save a dance for you, Henry. Have you saved one for me, Scarlet? Why, Ashley, you know I have.
remember when we used to dance, Ashley? It's hard to remember sometimes. I wonder if any of us will ever dance again the way we used to before the war. Our hearts were different then. Everything was different then. I miss it so, don't you, Scarlet? Will it ever be that way again, do you think? I guess not. You gotta keep dancing, don't we? Oh, my Lord. What is this, Scarlet? I haven't trod on your toe, have I? He's here. I beg your pardon? He's here, Ashley. I didn't think he'd come. I hardly dared hope. That's the silliest looking thing I've ever seen. Who you're supposed to be. You keep a civil tongue in your pretty head, young miss. You were address and Edward Teach, the most fearsome pirate that ever plowed the bound in Maine, known far and wide as Blackbeard. Hmm. Bluebeard would be more like it. Did you recognize <laughs> me, too? I don't need to find the most ostentatious gun in the room to know who was under it. I might have known you'd say something mean. Oh, my dear Scarlet, I'd know you with a flower sack on your head. And how would you manage that? Well, I'm too much of a gentleman this evening to say. Have you been drinking, Red Butler? I believe you've been drinking. No, I can't be seen, Scarlet, not to see. I'm taking the opportunity to fulfill our obligations to the social amenities. Keeping down the gossip, that's all you came for. You didn't come to see me, you Scarlet. I had a girl, dear Scarlet, whisper your sweet nothings into my burning ears. Rick, mother, you're as <laughs> tipsy as a toe in a beer barrel. <laughs> I assume that weapon is not loaded. I don't think I chance being in such close proximity to you with a loaded pistol so easy to hang on, Scarlet. I suppose you'll be staying the night at the house. I'd imagine the gossip tomorrow if I were to check into the Harmon Hotel tonight. Now, I understand you made quite a spectacle of yourself at Melanie's funeral. I was only trying to keep Ashley from making a spectacle of himself. What you don't understand, Scarlet, is that Ashley had a right to his spectacle. It was well within his bounds. You were way outside of yours. You just persist in breaking the rules, my dear. Well, not that I'd hold you to account for that. Personally, I've always found it to be one of the few appealing aspects of your otherwise dangerous nature. I don't care what the mucky mucks think of me. I never have, and I'm not going to start. And the more you nut on, the more fortunate it is for you that that pistol isn't loaded. <laughs> Ooh. Miss Scarlet, y'all have pleasant dreams now. You once carried me across this threshold. You can rest assured that won't happen again. Why'd you take a strap to me now that slave days is over, Miss Scarlet? When you never done when slave days still was. Well, there were plenty of times I wanted to. Yes, sir. I could see that. 
go away. You're doing yourself real hurt, Miss Scarlet. And it's breaking my heart to see you breaking yours. The only hurt there's gonna be around here is me hurting you if you don't remove yourself from my sight this instant. Wouldn't be you hurting me. Wasn't that bottle there? And you'd wake up a weeping in the morning for the doing of it. Then you'd best spare yourself the hurt and me the weeping. Well, it's just something I had to say is all. Pansy, I want you to wash my hair and start packing. We're going to Charleston. Just lots more hurting in Charleston. Now arriving in Charleston, the express train from Columbia. Oh, there she is, there she is. And the lady and Pauline. Let's <laughs> go. Shall we tell her now? Tell me what? Let's tell her now. Tell me what? As soon as we got your letter telling us you were coming to Charleston, why, well, we naturally mentioned it to Eleanor Butler. You told Rat's mother? Well, we naturally presumed she was already cognizant to the fact you being her daughter-in-law and all. But that she was just as surprised as we were, and we said... And we said, well, you would be staying with us at our house, of course, and she said... And she said, why, she'll be doing no such thing. She, she said, said, you bring that dear child directly to my doorstep upon her arrival in Charleston, you Lady Robillard, or you will never hear the end of it. You will never hear the end of it. <laughs> Is Red there? Red's up north in Philadelphia. Buy back some of the family silver the Yankees stole. Are you saying I'll be a guest for Mrs. Butler? Is that what you're saying? She's invited me to stay with her? Well, what could be more natural in a fitting child? It's your husband's home, too. Your husband's home, too. Glad you've come home. I've been longing for you to come. We'll go to market tomorrow. You'll meet everyone you should know there. It's the traditional place to learn all the news, too. <laughs> the newspapers don't print the really interesting thing. I suppose you couldn't help being aware of the unfortunate presence in Charleston of so many Yankee soldiers. I know you've been rid of them for some very long time up in Atlanta. Oh, we've been occupied for so long, we hardly even notice them anymore. We're used to them. I'll never get used to them, never. Well, then we'll just have to do our best to distract you from their presence, my dear. And we can begin this very day. My committee is meeting here this afternoon. Oh, you must join us, well, if only for tea. I certainly wouldn't want to prevail on you to participate, of course. And what? Well, we raise money with cake sales and bazaars of handcrafts and such for the Confederate home for widows and orphans. Oh, well, I'd be quite pleased to participate in something like that. Oh, lovely. Every bit of help helps. <laughs> yeah, come on! Let's go! Is that <laughs> Sally Bruton? She can be mad as a March Hare at times. Margaret, Emma, we have arrived. Oh my! Oh, oh my! Well, oh my! It's another perfectly thrilling ride, Sally. One so looks forward to it. Oh, speak for yourself. You, Eleanor. <laughs> oh. Oh. Who's that with you? The new recruit for our disgustingly noble cause. 
I had always heard that you would turn the heads on tin soldiers. I'm pleased to see that nobody was exaggerating. Smoke? No, thank you. I don't indulge. Your husband and I go back to when he was in knee pants, and I was wondering what those two funny bumps was coming up on my chest. <laughs> Sandy, really? Eleanor, was that rascal of a son of yours been keeping himself? Well, he's in Philadelphia, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Philadelphia? What the flu perfect heck is he doing in Philadelphia? Why don't you ask him yourself? Oh, Red! I believe you rang for tea, Mrs. Butler. Red, darling. Is that what I think it is? Is that my tea service? Oh, Lord, it is my tea service. <laughs> Where else did you find it? Philadelphia, where well, am I? The place is bursting with Yankee <laughs> plunder. But I brought a little bit of it home. It's rightful place. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. Oh. I don't blame you. If I never had a son, I'd want him to be just like Rhett. Husband would have been even better. Sully, 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 Sully. Oh, how you been keeping you wolf in wolf's clothing? <laughs> Now, it seems to me I proposed to you on a number of occasions, Sally. Yeah, I think you were about 12 years old at the time. Yeah, well, I wanted to get my bid in early. Hello, Red. Um, <clears throat> it's a fortunate man who's offered a greater surprise than he offered. Red, I don't believe you know our newest member, Miss Anne Hampton. How to do, Miss Hampton? I'm charmed to finally meet you, Mr. Butler. I've heard so much about you. Well, your tender ears must be sizzling. Welcome home, Red, honey. Welcome to Charleston, Scarlet. Honey. Thank you, my Seriously, I had my arm, Red what Butler. What are you doing here? Well, I sure didn't come all this way to lend my time and efforts to the Confederate widows and orphans so in society. What do you think I'm doing here? I'm here to be with you. Well, I don't want you here, Scarlet. I no longer love you. I don't say that. I'm your wife. You're my husband. An unfortunate circumstance I offered to correct. Divorce? I will never divorce you. Never, never, never! Your mother's overjoyed that I'm here. What will you tell her if you throw me out? Because I'll tell her the truth and it'll break her heart, I believe. Yeah, well, I don't have to throw you out, Scarlet. Sooner or later, you'll reveal yourself. You think you can pass yourself off as a lady, don't you? Charleston Gentry will see right through you. I am a lady, damn you! You couldn't fool a blind, deaf mule. Now, show me your clothes. What? I assume you've armed yourself with a new wardrobe to win back my favors, all of it in your typically awful taste. <laughs> now, show me your new frocks. I'll see what can be salvaged, if anything. Cold trying to be a lure in Scarlet. You're wasting your time. I think I've been wasting my time since the day I first laid eyes on you. I'll get rid of all this lace. It's supposed to be a dress, not a tablecloth. Get rid of this one altogether. It's hopeless. I change these gold buttons for black ones and shorten the train. <laughs> it don't bows on this to decorate a Christmas tree. I hope you're enjoying insulting me. As a matter of fact, I am. Now, see if you can make one of these presentable enough to be seen in this evening. I'll thank you to remember my mother was a Robillard from Savannah, and the O'Haras are descended from the kings of Ireland. Every Irishman I've ever met or heard of seems to have been descended from a king. Is it just the one king, Scarlet? Or were there several? <laughs> That royal Irish blood, Miss Hampton, sometimes gets him carried away. <laughs> Good morning, Red, for joining us, Miss Eleanor. I'd sort of hoped to have my first breakfast in Charleston with the company of my husband. Oh, but I thought you knew, my dear. Well, there, there was a note from Rhett this morning. He left last night. He's gone up river to Dunmore Landing. Didn't he tell you? 
Well, aren't I the perfect dunce? Certainly, he told me. Completely left my mind what a silly willy I am. Certainly. Your plantation. Yes. He spends quite a bit of his time there these days, as you're no doubt aware. Well, maybe it's just as well I have a private moment with you, Miss Eleanor. Oh? I need you to help me, Miss Eleanor. Well, of course, Scarlett. How may I? Anything. I want to look like a lady, Miss Eleanor. Oh, Scarlett. I know that I don't, but I want to know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, I am a lady, Miss Eleanor. I am. Well, of course you are, Scarlett. Well, it may be that you have so much vitality. I mean, all the, the vigor of the world you grew up in. It's misleading to people here in the old, tired, low country. Still, you have no need of rouge on your lovely face. And your clothes are, well, uh, some of your clothes are ill considered. Y yes, we'll just have to find ways to make you more like us, then you'll be more comfortable. And I suppose you will be, too. <laughs> well, I would never have said so. Fresh vegetables over here. I mean, so delicious. You could gain 20 pounds responding. Oh, uh, yes, uh, I want some uh, sausage. You don't want those onions. They're no good. Well, good? What's wrong with them? They're not rotten or sprouting. But they've been dug up too soon. They look fine, but they won't have any flavor. You can take my word for it. How do you know that? When I had to run our place after the war, Tara, I planted onions. I didn't know beans about growing things, no pun intended. So I dug up a batch of them as soon as the tops started to brown. I figured they were drying and had rot, but they didn't have any bite of them at all. These are what you want. These are good onions. Well, what can you tell me about celery? I have an uncommon, if not downright unnatural adoration for celery. <laughs> <laughs> celery was too fancy for us. I had a dozen mouths to feed. Ask me about yams, though, or white potatoes, or turnips, or cotton. You worked the fields. We had to eat. Oh, I've just got to have a look at those baskets. I hear Charleston's famous for its basketry. Oh. I missed out on the darn sausage. Oh. That girl is just about altogether lacking in anything that would pass for an education. She's got the taste of a hot and tart. Sure. But she's got vigor and strength and brains. She's a survivor. We need her kind in the South, there and all. Even in Charleston. Maybe especially in Charleston. I'm going to sponsor her. <sighs> Scarlett, we have a rather important matter we'd like to discuss with you. What's that, Aunt Pauline? Concerning your grandfather, Robillard. In Savannah. What about him? It's come oh, to our attention oh, that you've oh, not oh, visited oh, your oh, grandfather oh, in some years now. Some years now. Why should I write to him? He's a crabby, mean old man who hasn't lived with a finger for me my whole life. Now, Scarlet, we were sort of hoping you might come along with us to Savannah next month. For the celebration party. What celebration party? Father's birthday. Well, I guess you'll just have to do that celebrating without me. Now, Scarlett, regardless of your personal feelings for Father, you might consider the question of respect for one's elders. And family loyalty. Duty. Plain good manners. Don't you dare preach over me. I don't care a fig for Grandfather Robillard. He was horror to my mother, and he was horror to me. You know I'm right. He treats everybody like dirt, including you, his own daughters. Father's sometimes less than gracious. Behavior. Father has his shortcomings that cannot be gainsaid, but he is our father nonetheless. Nonetheless. And nonetheless, I won't be in Savannah watching him blow out his candles. What I said she'd say. It's what you say. Okay, my whole table, Mr. Butler. 
Take your pick, Miss Bruton. Ah, <laughs> oh, flowers. <laughs> you, sir, are a caution. You may go way back, Rhett. Long enough, do you reckon, to tell me just what exactly is going on between you and that amazing girl? And what makes you think anything's going on? Your mother told me that Scarlet was less charitable to you concerning the death of your child. If I hadn't wanted Bonnet to ride at this young and eight as I did, she wouldn't have been on a horse. If she hadn't been on a horse, she wouldn't have been jumping it. If she hadn't been jumping it, she'd still be alive. There were several remarks to that effect. That was obviously grief, turned upside down and backwards, right? She's put it back together now, it seems to me. Why else would she be in Charleston except to show you that? She's here in Charleston because she refuses to believe our marriage is over, Sally. The marriage has never have occurred in the first place. When I proposed Scarlet, she'd been married twice before, and she only married me for my money. She made no bones about that. And she was madly in love with Ashley Wilkes into the bargain. Why on earth did you marry her? <sighs> because she was unlike any woman I'd ever known. Passionate and infuriating. I fell in love with her the moment I laid eyes on her. Kind of disease, I suppose. Now, I see books as a free man and marry Scarlet an instant, and I want to be rid of her. Actually, that only makes her more determined to have. <laughs> I'm afraid it might all happen again. He's heartless. He's selfish. He's, she's like a child who cries for a toy and then breaks it. When I come close to forgetting what I know. Well, maybe she'll change. When pigs fly, my dear. $50,000 in gold. I beg your pardon. If you'll go away. Go away? It's a handsome deal, Scarlet. Fortune bigger than you'd ever hoped for. The king's ransom. The king being you, I guess. That's funny you should be standing there offering me what you call a deal. What's funny about it? The reason I came up here was to offer you one, my darling. I shudder to think what your mind might concoct. Well, why don't you just listen through all that children? What I'm offering is for you to stop acting so hateful to me. To act nice and help me have a good time through the social season like a devoted, happy husband and wife. And when the season's over, then I'll go home to Atlanta. But that the money? Well, don't be silly with the money, of course. Well, that's not exactly my idea of a deal, Scarlet. There's nothing in it for me. You take the money, I'm willing to give you the leave, but you don't leave. So how do I benefit? I don't stay forever, and I don't tell your mother what a skunk you are and break her heart. Hmm. I think we might be able to do business. I'm always willing to dick her. Now, you confide in my mother that however much you adore your husband, he snores incorrigibly and unbearably. A marital misfortune that requires us always to sleep in separate bedrooms. After the St. Cecilia Ball, you'll express an urgent, irresistible desire to rush back to Atlanta, where you will immediately engage the services of a lawyer to negotiate a legally binding separation agreement. You will never again set foot in Charleston. You'll never write or otherwise communicate with me. You swear you'll be nice for the whole time before I leave? Word of honor. Well, lack in a Bible, I guess that'll have to do. But if you turn mean, then it's you that broke the deal, not me, and I don't have to leave. Done. But I still get the money. Done. Mr. Butler, you're a right trial in the husband department, but it's nice doing business with you. I don't suppose you'd reconsider that aspect concerning separate bedrooms. A girl can't have everything.
13, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There you are, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, Red. Well, now, here's a happy surprise. Red, little darling, I was just hoping I'd run into you. And so you have. Where have you been, Lily? Just fine and dandy, Red. When are you coming back to Atlanta? I never can tell when I might take a run up there. Of course, could be. I'll be here in Charleston if Belle wants. You don't say. Now, why is that? Business. Yours. Mine's the only kind of business I know, ain't it? Exploring new frontiers of commerce, are you, honey? Mm, you might say. Belle's opening the whorehouse. You might say that, too. Well, you're here just in time for the big race. What big race? Horse race I'm running the day after tomorrow. So who are you running a horse race for? I love horse racing. Can we go bail can we? What horse race? Look, I happen to have won an exceptionally fine quarter horse in a card game. How much? A fellow that lost it to me suggested a further wager. He'd race me for it. If he wins, he gets his horse back. If I win, I've got to keep the horse and take his other one as well. What's the sense in that? Why don't you just sell for what you already won? Oh, why are you in Charleston? Touche. She told you, she's opening a whorehouse. <laughs> Uh, don't tell the Mrs. Jake. Don't make me have to. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Hemp. Hello, Mr. Butler. Who are you betting on? I'm not the betting sort. I thought horse racing was always around and around. No, not this kind. This kind of street. I thought it'd be around and around. Mother? You who ran? Am I as deceiving me, or is that Belle Watling? Morning, Belle. Lulie. Ladies, may I introduce Miss Belle Watling and Miss Lula Harris. My mother, Belle, Mrs. Butler Senior. How do? And I don't believe you've ever met my wife, Scott. I know Miss Watling by reputation. Glad to make your acquaintance, Miss Butler. Heard lots about you. I don't expect you came all the way down from Atlanta to see Red race a horse, Miss Watling. Mm, fond as I am a Red, I wouldn't travel six feet to watch that. Actually, I'm here on the business, tooth be told. Oh, I'm so fascinated by ladies with business interests. <laughs> so very unusual, isn't it? <laughs> what business are you engaged in, Miss Watling, if one may know? You might say I arrange social get-togethers. I see. Uh, what exactly? Uh, the, uh, mother, I believe it's time for the race to start. Ah. Bell, real good running into you. Lulee, wish me luck. I bet a whole dollar on you, Red. Don't you disappoint me now. Seldom does. Easy on that last bend, Harry. Yeah. Great job. Good run. 
Butler. Miss Hampton. Congratulations, Mr. Butler. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I really don't believe Rhett was in need of two more horses, though. Didn't have a darn thing to do with having horses, Miss Eleanor. Just had to do with him winning something. <laughs> Stop all this lollygagging around, Sally, and accept my oft-repeated proposals of matrimony. Max, well, if I told you once, I told you more than twice. Two marriages is enough for me. Nothing personal. Third time lucky. Says who? When I mentioned to them that I'd recently made your acquaintance, Daddy said you had a reputation of some considerable notoriety during the war. Did he really? Wonder what he could have been referring to. Are you teasing me? I made me some money and I had me some fun. Looking real pretty tonight, Martha. Yes, yes. <laughs> Did you come to my room last night? No. You're lying. Why would I lie? I must have dreamt it. Some random nocturnal fever overcame me, no doubt, giving rise to visions. Did you come to my room last night? Yes. I expect your dance card's full. I threw it away. I'm not dancing with anyone but you tonight. We'll be hearing the crack of breaking hearts all over the ball. There's only one I want to hear breaking. Pity. You're a skunk. It was by far the very best ball of the season, don't you think? And the last. I guess that's your way of reminding me our agreement has concluded if I need a reminder. I don't want to talk about that tonight. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Your mother mentioned your being in New Orleans recently. For a short while. Do your being there bring to mind our honeymoon? Sure, indeed. Well, that's something anyway. Is your boat out there somewhere? Mm-hmm. Does it have a name? Barney. I suppose I might have guessed that. I've never been sailing. What's it like? It's wonderful. I'll bet it is. I've never been. All right. All right. Just this once. As Adam said to Eve. <laughs>
Please, don't die on me. I thought you were gone. Pansy. Pansy. Oh, Miss Scarlet, you woke up. You've been sleeping the longest time. How long? What time is it? How is she? Well, she woke up just this minute. Oh, my goodness. Oh, honey. Miss Eleanor. Oh. How long have I been sleeping? Oh. Where's Red? been sleeping nearly 24 hours, dearest. How do you feel? It's a horse affair, 24 hours. Mm. How could anybody sleep that long? <laughs> you had quite an ordeal, don't you remember? 
Most of it, I guess. Where's Red? Pansy, go tell Mr. Red that Sleeping Beauty is back from the land of Nod. Well, maybe not so beauty if I look as bad as I feel. No. Well, perfectly dreadful. No. Well, I don't believe Mr. Red here right now. Pansy, Pansy. go down to the kitchen and bring some of that broth up for Miss Scarlet and some tea. Now, the doctor's been by several times, and he's given every assurance about your condition, and he says he wants you to rest for another day or two. Is Red all right? Red's fine. I've got the most splitting headache. Will he be back soon? Go, oh, Miss Elena. It's just like the poets say. Sometimes, out of the darkest danger and fear comes the most beautiful and dazzling light. Almost lost our lives. And in that near losing, we found each other at last. Oh, Scarlet. <gasps> What's the matter? It is all right, isn't it? You're not lying to me, are you? this? From Red? Shall I leave you alone for a bit? said in the aftermath of our ill-advised and reckless encounter. I must not and will not ever see you again. Naturally, I cannot remain in the environs of Charleston. The cash settlement I promised will be transferred to you immediately in care of Henry Hamilton in Atlanta. I ask you to accept my sincere apologies for everything about our lives together. It was not meant to be. I wish you a happier future. Miss Scarlet, messenger just came by. Delighted as I am to hear your news, Ashley. I naturally would have preferred it had been a visit of me brought you to Charleston. Instead of merely some darned old business matter. Well, dare I say that my business here is more excuse for my presence than reason for it. You're not rake enough to say such a thing to a lady, Ashley. Not and get away with it. I sometimes so wish I were rake enough. You've heard the saying about leopards and spots, I guess. Alas, yes. Alas, nothing. What you are is wonderful and fine, Ashley. You have no cause whatsoever for regret about it. It's what I loved you for. I made such a ninny out of myself for, if truth be told, and I guess it has to be sometimes. If Red Butler had just a smidgen of your character and dignity. How is Red? That's the first mention you've made of him. There's a leopard changed his spots for a stripe down his back. Are there difficulties? I thought you'd both. He's left me, Ashley. For good and all this time, I guess. I'm so very sorry, my dear. A bit ago, you said you bought a surprise for me. As if you being here wasn't surprise enough. I won't tolerate being kept in suspense for one minute longer. I brought you some photographs. I'll just go and get them. I'll only be a moment. Don't be silly. Save your trip. I'll come on up. You really think you should? It's silly to be. I've spent the past two months trying to do what's expected of a proper Charlestonian nose in the air lady. And what I have to conclude is that they're them and I'm me, and never the twain's gonna meet. 
I hope the accommodations in this hotel are worthy of you, Ashley. I'm quite content so far. They're perfectly wonderful, Ashley. I can hardly wait to see them real. Well, of course, the photographs don't quite do them justice. They're such fine homes. They've enhanced Big Sam's reputation in the building trades. You can be sure of that. And how about your reputation in the lumber trades? I've got almost more demand than I can supply. I'm so tickled pink for you, Ashley. Will you be coming back to Atlanta, Scarlett? I haven't quite decided on my next course of life. I wish you'd come back to Atlanta. Do you? Very much. I think maybe I've got about 10 seconds to get myself out of this room. Let's go. Five. Scarlet, this is Charleston. And you are ostensibly a lady. A lady does not accompany a man to his hotel room, and certainly not in the broad light of day for anyone to behold, and most certainly not in Charleston. And did this person who saw me going up the stairs, whoever she is, since you are obviously going to refuse to divulge her identity to me, did this, this person happen to observe me coming back down the stairs 10 minutes later? I'd need more time than that to get my shoes unlaced, much less my corsets. Scarlet, don't. You're being vulgar. I'm sorry. But you are no longer welcome in this house. Well, that suits me just fine. Because this is no longer a house in which I care to be welcomed. Was rub aloud? Whichever. Whichever. You made it! You made it! Scarlet's changed her mind. She's going to Savannah with us. I guess life's just a long game of chance after all, isn't it, Mr. Rare Butler? That's what a gambling man like you would say, isn't it? And you think you've won it and walked away from the table, leaving me high and dry. Well, you'll be thinking again one of these days, won't you? You surely will. 
Maybe you don't want me, but I've got something now you do want. Always want it. The ace is up my sleeve now, and I'll play it when the time's right, when I'm good and ready. You'll be willing to walk barefoot over hot coals to come back to me. We were always two pieces of the one thing, my darling Red. Now we're three. <laughs> 